Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how I built this awesome little tungsten sharpener with materials that only cost me about 25 bucks. So why do you want one of these? Why do you want to diamond grind your tungsten and get a really nice uh, consistent point on it instead of just using a bench grinder? Well, let me show you right here. Uh, I set my machine to 25 amps. I'm just going to strike an arc right here and light up and I'm going about half pedal so I'm about 13 amps and look how crisp it just starts up and I'm able to run that right there and that's what you get when you get a nice uh, diamond ground tungsten that's uh, you know got a really fine finish and then on top of that the other thing that's really nice with the tungsten sharpener is that you get a really consistent point so you know let's say you're welding along and you know you foul up your tungsten well, when you go to grab the next one, it's really nice if it's just the same because if you were already in your groove, then everything's going to keep running just how it was. You don't introduce another variable. Okay, so I got online and I found this diamond wheel with 400 grit. And from what I researched, 400 grit is about right. And then I went to Harbor Freight and used a $11 coupon to pick up this four and a half inch angle grinder to put it on. And, and I'll put a link to all of the supplies that I use down below. But you can see this doesn't fit on quite right because it's too thin and so the nut won't hold it. And furthermore, if it sits down below, it won't be centered because there's that relief below the pilot diameter. So I got this machine bushing just at the hardware store. And it's basically just a washer with a little bit more precise diameter. And that spaces it up so it sits on the pilot uh, bushing there, the pilot diameter. And I can tighten the nut right on there to hold it in place. And I'll just cinch that up with the uh, spanner wrench here. And then let's turn it on and make sure everything looks like it's running true and running well. And it does. So I think we have a good diamond wheel on a motor that will work pretty well for a tungsten grinder. The main thing that we're going to have to make here today is a guide to guide the tungsten electrodes in. And, and this guide needs to be attached somewhere that doesn't rotate. And it also, uh, I would like it to be adjustable. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it with a single fastener to the shroud right here that I've removed. And I'll grind a little bit of paint off here and clamp on a uh, screw. Now I ground most of the zinc coating off of the head of this screw so that wouldn't be down in our weld to, to make things go a little better and be a little safer. So I'm just going to TIG weld this. I'll throw a few tacks on here in three places to hold it in place and then weld all the way around. And you can see as I tack here, even though I cleared the paint off on the inside, we're getting a little bit of smoke uh, just because that's, that's what happens when you work with painted things. To make the angled guide itself, I'm using this angle iron. It's um, one and a half inch by a quarter inch thick. So it's about 40 millimeter leg and six millimeters thick. And I'm gonna cut a half inch long piece of this off Hey, well, let me interrupt this build for just a second to introduce myself if you haven't tuned in before. My name's Tim. I'm a welding engineer with a side hustle shop in my garage where I make these videos where I teach welding and fabrication and show some of the projects that I make. Now, if you're just getting started with TIG welding, I'll link in the description a full tutorial that I put together where I go over everything from machines, uh, electrodes, torches, welding technique, everything you need to know when you get started TIG welding. So check that out after this video is over. And if you want to learn more and up your game with welding and fabrication, be sure to click that subscribe below. Let's get back to the build. So here's that half inch long piece of the angled steel that I'm going to use and it came out pretty good off of that saw there. I'm going to center punch a spot to drill a quarter inch hole to fit right over that bolt that I'd welded on to the angle grinder. So I'll go ahead and come down here and clamp it in and uh, drill it with my drill press. You could drill it by hand just as well though if you don't have a drill press that would be just fine. You can see as I drill I'm uh, relieving the pressure from time to time to break those chips off and I'm getting a nice chip so that means I'm running around about the right speed. Now let's take a test fit of this piece here and you can see I put those two center punches to indicate where the two holes will be to guide the tungsten electrodes. And they sat down a little low so I'm going to drill another hole and I'll try that see if that works a little better and I like where that's sitting much better. However, I'd like the holes for the electrodes to be down a little lower. Now I'm doing two because I use 1 16th inch and 3 32nd inch tungsten. Usually I just use 3 32nd of an inch, 
uh, or I believe that's 2.4 millimeter tungsten electrodes. So I went ahead and punched two more holes down a little lower to drill those holes. And here I'll go ahead and drill the 3 seconds inch hole to guide my tungsten electrode. And you'll notice I'm drilling them a little bit off to the side there so that I can get a little bit steeper angle. And you'll see better what I'm talking about when the whole, whole thing goes together. Now I'll drill a 1 16th inch hole and I'll have those too. So here is my basic guide. It's starting to take shape. I'm going to go ahead and do a test fit here and I'll set it on. And you can see I can pivot it around there so I can adjust the angle that I'm putting on the tungsten electrodes as I slide it through there. And I'll just rotate them by hand. Uh, however, in order to get even a steeper angle on it, I'm going to go ahead and put a chamfer right here that goes right up to the edge of those holes so that I can get the arm to swing around even further. And so I'm just using a 120 grit flap disc to do that. And you can see now that I put it on, I can swing it way far around flat and have that adjustability that I'm hoping for. So that seems to be working pretty well. So I'm gonna cut off that first hole that I made right here and then clean it up with a grinder just to give a nice clean look on this tool that I'm making. So now that it's uh, made, I'm going to go ahead and assemble with this star washer on the bottom. And that's going to help keep it from rotating around as I tighten it down. And then I'm going to put one on the top that will help keep my nut tight. Now I'm going to use this thumb nut here. And I just picked all these things up at the hardware store. And I'm going to use this so that I can easily change the angle without having to look around for a special tool. And so that seems to hold it onto the, the guard right there pretty well. Now the guard wasn't screwed on, that's why you saw it moving around, but I'm testing it out here with a 1 16th inch electrode, and now with a brand new 3 seconds of an inch. And you can see that point is taking shape in no time. Let's zoom in and take a close up look of those points. And, and the way that I got it all the way around is just by rotating it with, your, with my fingers, and the more consistent I am, the better it'll come out. Now it's a little cumbersome just sitting on the bench like that, though you could use it that way. I'm going to build a stand for it, and I'm just using this 3 quarter inch square tubing. And then I'm going to also use some 2 inch angle iron here, so that's about, uh, what what is that, about 50 millimeter uh, leg on the angle iron and about 20 millimeters on the square tubing. And I'm going to line it up like this so that I can set the angle grinder on top of there and just hold it down with a U-bolt. And so I've uh, reached for my MIG welder because it's getting pretty late and there's some mill scale on this angle iron. I don't think it's a great use of my time to clean it off for this. So I'm uh, welding out with the MIG and I'm just welding downhill here because this tubing is so thin that'll be a pretty good technique to get a, a good weld on there. Now I've dropped the, the tubing down about a quarter inch from the top uh, so that I can put a nice fillet weld in there and still have a flush surface on top and that's going pretty well for me here. Now that it's uh, welded all the way around I'll go ahead and drill two holes for those U-bolts and then I'll be ready to take it over and shoot on some uh, 99 cent black paint. So I'll, I'll spray some of this on here and get everything uh, ready to go. Now that it's painted, we can just take a look here at, at these basic components that uh, that I made, and they, they turned out pretty well. So it's time to assemble the whole thing together. And I'll put some of these rubber pads here on the bottom that'll keep it a little more sturdy as I'm using it, because there, there may be a little bit of vibration. So uh, I want that there just to keep everything sitting nice and still. Next, I've put the guard back on the angle grinder just like we did before, and then I'll set it here and put this U-bolt through from the top, and then I'm just using two nylon locking nuts on the bottom to keep them from uh, falling off. So we'll take a look at the finished product here, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it sits nice and sturdy, and I'll uh, grind one more electrode here, and you can see just how fast I get that point on it. It's great. Okay, well I think this is going to be a really useful tool for us here in the shop and hopefully this is something that you'll be able to, to make some version of and adapt to use in your shop and I think you'll, uh, you'll really enjoy it. Thanks again for tuning in today and we'll see you next time.